In this video, I want to go over a book that you've probably never heard of. Uh, there's no title on the cover, just a strange symbol. But if I turn it over, you can see the book is Pure Mathematics. This is a book on what the authors call Pure Mathematics. It's written by Geary and Guru. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Let's take a look inside this little-known book. Here's the inside cover. It says, Standard Telecommunication Laboratories Limited, London Road, Harlow, Essex. So this book was written in London. So Standard Communication Laboratories, LTD. Technical Library. So I guess uh, that's a company, I believe. And maybe this company has its own library. I'm not really sure. I haven't uh, taken the time to uh, look that up. Here's the inside cover. You see it says Pure Mathematics, and then we have Geary and Guru. It looks like they were both uh, professors in London, England. And there it says London. Let's turn the page. I believe this is a very, very old book. Oh yeah, look at that. 1965 and then first published 1965. So this is a really, really, really old book. I love the title of the book, you know, Pure Mathematics. I was always more into the pure math uh, than the applied. So here is the preface. It says, this one volume textbook covers the syllabuses in pure mathematics at advanced level of the various examining boards for the general certificate of education. It also covers a large part of the syllabus for the special papers in pure mathematics. And so it should also be of use to candidates for university scholarships. So I'm not really sure um, what uh, that is, the General Certificate of Education uh, or the special papers in pure math. I'm not really familiar with the university system in London. The treatment is concise but thorough, so that I do agree with. Um, it is very thorough and it is very concise. And there are numerous examples, worked or otherwise. That is also true. There are so many problems in this book. Let's go ahead and take a look further inside this awesome book. So here's the table of contents. Starts with algebraic processes, equations and identities, plane geometry, trigonometric ratios, solution of triangles, addition formulae. I love, I love the language. Limits. So now we get to some, we do some calculus. Series, coordinate geometry of the straight line and circle, conic sections, differentiation, some more differentiation, some geometry, complex numbers, and then. The answers. So the book does actually have answers, which is really, really nice. This is the first chapter, and you can see it talks about notation here and gives you a little bit of history surrounding notation in mathematics. And then they go through some math here. And this first little part is really nice because you read one page, you turn the page, Okay, and then you, you keep going through it. It's pretty terse and very mathematical. I mean, it's, it's, it's a book of pure mathematics. And then you have exercises right away. So you, you're able to test your skills right away, right from the beginning of the book. This is the section on logarithms. And you see the authors continue with their conciseness. It's a really concise book. Um, it's just, you know, symbolism and formality. Uh, it's a math book. It's a book of pure math. Now, not all of the sections are really tiny like the first one. Some of the sections are a little bit longer. So, for example, this says logarithms. And I turn the page. Let me turn the page here so we can see. It's stuck together. There we go. So we have more. More stuff here. Still more stuff. Still no exercises, right? So it keeps going for quite some time before we get to, to exercises again. So still more mathematics, right? More math, more math, more math. It talks about a slide rule. There's a picture of a slide rule there, kind of old school. And finally, we get to some exercises. So not all of the sections are super small. Some of the sections are actually a little bit bigger. This is chapter four, which is on trigonometric ratios. It says, the credit for originating trigonometry, which literally means the measurement of triangles, is due to Hipparchus. I hope I said that right. The eminent Greek astronomer who lived in the latter half of the second century BC. Wow, that was a long time ago. And the authors go on and give you like a complete history of what is about to be discussed, which is really nice. It kind of 
makes you appreciate, you know, where it all comes from. And then the history lesson ends, and we resume the pure mathematics, as the book is called. So just really, really nice, uh, concise math. I wouldn't say this is like a book for beginners. I would actually say this is a book for someone who wants to maybe refresh their math skills or take a, a different look at mathematics. You know, the way that the material is covered here is very different uh, from the modern textbooks. Modern books uh, don't often explain math like this. I mean, some things never change, right? Math doesn't change, but the way you explain it um, always varies from book to book and from era to era and from country to country, right? This book is from England. One of the best parts about this book is that it has answers to every single exercise. So you can actually work through the book, do the problems, and you have solutions to every problem, even the even problems, which is awesome. Um, a lot of the older books did not have any answers at all. So this is really not characteristic of what you would see in an older book. And it's, it's kind of strange because the book is written in a really like concise and formal and rigorous way, but yet the authors give you all the answers, which is not something you normally see. These are some of the exercises in the section on differentiation. You see there's some integrals here. So there's some indefinite integrals, and then we have some definite ones uh, as well. So really, really basic stuff. Then we have some differential equations. The authors decided, hey, let's just throw in some, let's throw in some DEs, you know, why not? <laughs> and then some other problems here. So really, really, uh, you know, a different approach. Here are some of the exercises on the section which is titled Exponential and Hyperbolic Functions. And I wanted to just show you this slowly so you can see uh, you know, the amount of material that's actually covered in this little black book called Pure Mathematics. It contains quite a bit of calculus. I mean, it starts from the very beginning, you know, properties of, of exponents, and it's got calculus in it. I mean, there's some limits here. Okay, then it's got some more indefinite integrals here. They start to get a little bit harder. Really cool stuff, really exciting. So this is the section on series, and the name is just, it's not enough, right? It, it underscores the amount of math that's in this one chapter. So this is on series, okay, and it talks about infinite series right away. Okay, let's keep going. Let me show you what else is in this section. It's really cool. And then they talk about, you know, an arithmetic progression, which is typically something that is studied. Um, usually like in a pre-calc class, at least in the U.S. It talks about arithmetic means on the very next page. Then it goes over, talks about geometric progression, geometric means. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the page here. I want to show you all the little topics. Continue proportion, sum to infinity of a geometric progression. That's a really nice formula, really easy to prove. It's worth proving that, by the way, if you don't know how to do it. Recurring decimals, compound interest, and annuities. Let's keep going. Okay, so we're still in the section on series. Harmonic progression, right? So much math. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Arithmetic, geometric, and harmonic means. It talks about other series. What are the other series? So you can see here. Okay, I had to skip some stuff. I skipped a section on natural numbers, but we're still in the chapter on series. Now it's going on and it's discussing permutations and combinations. So really, really unexpected. I mean, that's not something you would typically see in a chapter on series. And it talks about factorials, some more counting, some arrangements. Let's go ahead and turn the page. Arrangement of n things in a circle. That's always fun. More on permutations. Then it goes into probability. And again, we're still in the chapter on series. They just keep going and going. It talks about exclusive events, independent events. I mean, so much math. And this is this is just one chapter of this little black book, okay? So, I mean, this is not the whole book. This is just one little chapter. It's like these tiny little subsections in each chapter. They're just filled with like these like little nuggets of, of beautiful math. This is wonderful. <laughs> the authors decide to include 
induction, like proof by induction, and it's introduced in this chapter. Let's read this together. It says, when a result is believed to be true, it can be sometimes be, it can sometimes be proved by the method illustrated below, which is known as proof by induction. So just throwing it out there. Hey, let's do an induction proof in the middle of the book in the chapter on series. That is just awesome. <laughs> so this is the result they're proving, which is actually a, a pretty decent one to start with. It's like the second easiest induction proof uh, that you can do. You know, the easiest one is if you replace the one squared with one and the two squared with two. So like one plus two plus three plus dot 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 to n would be n times n plus one over two. So here they do the sum of the of these squares, which is, it's a bit of a step up. Uh, but still, I, I think the fact they just throw it in <laughs> to the chapter on series is just so hardcore, only in a book called Pure Mathematics. I really think that this is a great book, and I think the best way to actually use this book to learn math is, is to sit down with a pen and paper and try to understand and work through it as carefully as you can. And if you don't understand something, that's okay, right? Just do your best. And then try to actually finish the section. And then you want to get to the exercises. That's the goal, in my opinion, when using a book like this. Because the exercises, in my view, are the most valuable thing in this entire book. And the reason is, one, there's so many of them. And two, you have solutions. You have answers to all of the problems, right? They're all in the back of the book. So the more exercises you do from this book, um, the better. This is almost like a problem book, right? It's, it's, a, it's a, like a workbook almost. Uh, but not really, right? It's, it's an actual textbook on pure math that just happens to have answers to to every single problem which is just awesome another big plus of this book is just the amount of content i mean here you have you know the differentiation of the inverse hyperbolic functions i mean wow uh in, in just a book called pure math which contains a gazillion other topics so you get so much math in in one little book which makes it completely worth owning, right? It makes it like a treasure. Something else to actually consider about this book, and this is gonna sound a little strange, but it's the size. It's like this little black book. You can see the size of my hand compared to the book. And it just feels right. You know, it's a, it's a good size for a book. It's easy to carry. It's a good looking little black book. And it opens and it stays open. It is not one of those books that, you know, it's too small that you have to kind of like push it open. I have a couple uh, soft cover books that are like that. For example, Applied Complex Variables uh, by Detman, which is a Dover book. Every time I open that book, it has a hard time laying open. That could be because it's soft cover. This is a hard cover one, so uh, it just lays flat and you can work through uh, the problems. So the book, again, is called Pure Mathematics. What a beautiful name. Any book with a name like that um, should have some serious math. And this book earns its title. It certainly has a ton of math. And it's written by Geary and Garreau. And this is a book from the 60s. I, I believe it was 1965 that uh, this book was written. Yeah, a long time ago. And it contains so much math. I mean, there is just so much math in this little black book. And amazing. Again, I don't think it's good for beginners, but I think it's good uh, for someone who knows some math and wants to improve their skills. The pros of this book, you have tons of knowledge. There are just so many topics, right? Do not let, you know, the, the table of contents deceive you. Remember, the table of contents, let me just show you one more time. I mean, it's a one-page table of contents. If the authors would have chosen, they could have made this six or seven or eight pages. But they chose to keep it simple. It's like, it's like, it's like they chose not to brag about how much math uh, they're putting in this book. So it's filled with math and it's filled with extremely good exercises with solutions for practice. Again, I highly recommend it. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck, everyone.